Well, the, the first thing is, is people uh, who are giving something, I think there's a real pleasure in getting something back and actually that very immediate feedback you get from being part of a community online is really, really powerful and you don't get that in the kind of large scale consultations uh, that government tries to run quite often. Um, and I think as well, um, I, there, there is something in the fact that that kind of gift economy has always been there. It's just that it's remained invisible and partly what kind of social media is beginning to do is, is bring that gift economy out into the open to make it more tangible. Um, and I think it's partly about actually just kind of recognising that and seeing that. Um, and when we're thinking about public services and what needs to happen next and you know how we're going to kind of deal with the changing demands, it's about seeing that kind of informal economy, I suppose, that kind of economy that you can't really um, put a price on and you can't really put targets on, but nevertheless is incredibly valuable when you're talking about kind of trying to achieve outcomes in terms of health or education or um, a well-being. I mean, I think when it, when it comes to participation, um, you know, if there's one lesson I've learned from the work I've been doing with local councils, it's that you need to have lots of different things going on at the same time. Actually, there isn't kind of one silver bullet uh, that kind of ticks the participation box. You need to find um, lots of different uh, kind of uh, environments, lots of different techniques, lots of different methods, lots of different approaches to engaging people uh, and encouraging their participation. Um, and so actually, uh, you know, as a local council, what you need to be thinking about is, you know, how, how many ways are we offering for people to participate? You know, do we have the kind of, you know, the forums to make decisions together? Do we have the opportunities for people to co-design services and identify improvements? Are we working with those Stream users to think about innovations for the future and actually broadening the kind of range of, of methods I suppose that that, um, that government currently use to engage people and encourage their participation I think is really really important we're not going to find the answer to this in you know one model of engagement and participation so the question is much more how do you broaden the opportunities and make sure you're reaching out to as many people as possible the, the whole point is that, that it should, you know, there, there should be multiple channels and multiple opportunities for people to be involved. We know that people are increasingly, increasingly online, but also particularly younger people, so finding ways of engaging them. I mean, for example, I know there's a really interesting piece of work in Kent uh, using uh, text messaging to engage young people in uh, uh, understanding their priorities for what they're looking for from where they live. Um, so you need to be, be making much smarter use of, uh, of, of of the internet and the kind of um, e uh e-participation I suppose but equally um, the kind of offline things that government is doing whether that's a kind of running uh, board meetings in a different way and giving people more power over decisions that are made or whether that's bringing people into um, projects where um, actually the council is trying to understand how it might improve a particular service or indeed which services matter um, bringing people into those kinds of projects is also important but I guess it's about having all of those different things happening uh, to kind of maximise the opportunities to engage, but also to get the most effective forms of participation going.